Pat, what are we up to next? We're going to install a stern thruster on this boat. Sideshift has a new model that bolts to the cavitation plate on the lower unit of an outdrive or even an outboard engine. No holes below the waterline. The only two holes for this mount are going to be on the transom well above the waterline, and that's just to bring the cables inside the boat. One nice thing about mounting above the cavitation plate, once on plane, the entire thruster will be out of the water, which means it won't add drag at higher speeds. Using the mounting plate as a template, drill four 3 8 inch holes, making sure to keep rearmost holes at least a half an inch inside the back edge of the cavitation plate. Also make sure the thruster plate is not sitting on top of the anode bolt. Here's a little trick for you. If you get a ratchet type or closed end, box end, 9 16 wrench, I put a little tape on one side, puts the bolt inside of it like that. I slide that down inside, drop my bolt into play, and tighten it. Be sure to apply the provided Permatex thread lock to the inside of the holes and the bolt threads. This will help prevent against corrosion. Because this is aluminum and this is aluminum and this is stainless steel, we like to put a little coating of thread lock as a galvanic protection so that we don't get corrosion inside. It's going to just migrate itself in between everything. Then I'm going to take my nut, which I've already put the uh, Loctite into, put a 9 16 on it. We've got a nice coating in there to protect the nut and protect the corrosion from happening in there. Now that the cavitation plate is on and secure, I'm going to mount the thruster. Now, you're going to see the way the thruster comes. The anodes that we have here, we like to install this unit so that the anodes are on the inside and all the cabling is going up the right-hand side or the starboard side of the boat. Well, I've already been to the engine compartment. I've made sure that there's nothing there in my way. I'm drilling my holes. At this point, before drilling the transom, it's a good idea to double-check your holes will be above the waterline. Sideshift also provides a flexible cable cover to help protect the cables attached to the drive, which you cut to length and slide over the cables before pushing them through the holes in the transom. Leave enough clearance to compensate for movement of the motor or drive from side to side and up and down. Then, secure the cables to the drive with the provided Velcro tape. Don't forget to seal the holes with Sikaflex. When finished, your external cables should look something like this. You can usually use the engine starting batteries to power the stern thruster. Just double check they have enough cold cranking amps. Determine an appropriate location for the motor controller, fuse, battery switch, and wireless receiver. Ideally close to the thruster battery to help keep the big expensive cables as short as possible, but also within reach of the thruster cables we poked through the transom earlier. The instruction manual is incredibly helpful for both bow and stern installs. It's a good idea to use ties to keep the cables organized and zip tie the spare fuse to the cable near the fuse holder. If you do need it one day, it will be easy to find. The receiver is next and is connected exactly the same as the bow thruster with all five leads connected to the motor controller. The other end of the harness plugs into the receiver, which then gets mounted with Velcro to the bulkhead. Flip the battery switch on and the LED voltmeter should light up and the red LED on the receiver should start flashing. Now, just like the bow receiver, once paired to the joystick, it will turn a solid red. All that's left is to test propeller rotation with the remote fob. And it is going in the right direction. With both thruster props turning the right way, it was time to drop the little regal in the water and try it out. After a little quick instruction, we wanted to capture Vanessa's first impressions. You've owned this boat for how many years? How long have you owned it? Uh, last year I got it. Is it your first boat? Yes. How I've was never it? boated before. How was it parking the first couple times? It was absolutely awful. I had to move docks because I had a hard time docking it by myself. So yeah, just okay, try so spinning just... it. Oh, cool. And then I could go the other way, too? Any way you want. Oh, there it goes. Look at me going in. Oh, wow. This wouldn't be as much fun if it was calm. No, <laughs> it's so true. I think you needed the wind to really get the full experience of what it actually can do. It literally just made boating so much easier. Like, this is so cool. I can't believe it. Like, I'm in shock right now. This is too cool. I would have avoided this area of the marina at all costs before this. We want to come back here and I'll show you something. Okay. There's another little accessory. 
remote lanyard. You're kidding. You can operate your thrusters from the back of the boat. Are you serious? Go ahead, give it a shot. Oh, wow. <gasps> Easiest docking ever. 